Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Steve from St. Bridges Hermitage. This is Moments with the Master. Today is the second day of June 2020, and we draw our readings today from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 12 through 18, the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 12, verses 13 through 17, and we're all draw my reflections today, the 90th Psalm. And as always, I encourage you to read those passages for yourself and draw your reflections on what they mean to you. The shortness of life, the lack of time. Where did the time go? Where did the years go? For myself, a minute ago, I was in my 20s, with small children at home. The next, they've left the house and started their journeys of life. And me, I'm rapidly approaching my sixth decade. You see, when we're younger, in our 20s, maybe our 30s, we think we have all time, all the time in the world. We think we have an indispensable time, plenty of time to take care of business, plenty of time to put things off. We tend to do that when it concerns the, the things of the Lord. We forget that our time, our life, is just a blip in the timing of God. As we read the 90th Psalm, we see the comparison. Man has, has 70, maybe 80 years. But the Lord, as the passage goes, before the mountains were formed and the world was created, he was there from everlasting to everlasting. Uh, this psalm teaches us that we should number our days, that we should try and gain a grain of wisdom that we should be strong in, in, in our beliefs. Because it's easy to put off things of the Lord. We always tell ourselves, uh, we'll do that when we're, when we're older. We're more mature, more settled, uh, when we have time to put into it. The problem with this line of thinking is we find ourselves ill-equipped to meet the storms of the day. Uh, we find ourselves scrambling with a prayer life or scripture reading uh, when bad things happen. But more importantly, we lose out on the blessings that God has in store for us, our everyday blessings. Um, we read in verse four of the 90th Psalm, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a night, watch of a night, See, our time is just a fleeting glimpse in God's eye. Uh, we don't understand living for a thousand years. Most of us don't understand living up for a hundred years. And many of us, we can't even remember what happened 50 years ago. What God's trying to tell us is, no, we don't have time. Uh, Christians can, should consider the shortness of their life because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We read in Job 14, uh, 1 and 2, Man is born of woman is a few days and full of troubles. He come forth as a flower and is cut down. He fleeteth as a shadow and continueth not. I've read these words many times over many funerals. They're meant to convey our frailty of life and, and the shortness of it. In short, God is telling us, no, you, you don't have time. None of us do. God wants us to be prepared for the trials and our struggles as we journey through life. We read in the verse, the verse 12 of the 90th Psalm, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And this thought is paralleled in the New, Te New Testament in the book of Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. We see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. God's telling us right up front, our days will be of trouble. There will be evil days upon us, and we should be prepared. We should be able to meet the challenges uh, that we have in store for us. And how do we meet those challenges? 
by being grounded in the Word of God, in the Scriptures, by having a healthy prayer life. Uh, the Bible tells us to use our time with great care. Redeemed uh, in this passage means to make the most of your time, to invest each minute with quality activities. Quality activities. That includes reading the scriptures, daily prayers, meditation, service to others, service to God. These are the things that God has in store for us. You know, because it's when we do these things that we find uh, the greater blessings that it, God really wants us to have. The world teaches us that we have time. And it's really all about us. But that's not what God's plan is. God's plan is that we do for others, that we meet the hurting of other people, we proclaim the gospel. We need to put aside this armchair Christianity and go out and do God's work. The world hurts and people hurt, and that should affect us. The world needs your ministry. The 90th Psalm was written by Moses. We all count Moses having a long life, and he did. But he was 80 before he received the call from God at the burning bush. For the first 80 years, he lived in the courts of Pharaoh or at Midian, and ended up spending the last 40 years from 80 to 120, shepherding the people of Israel, first out of Egypt and then through the desert and into the promised land. Uh, you see, God has a plan for all of us, no matter our, what our age is, no matter what our vocation, our education level, God has a plan for each one of you. And all we have to do is respond to that call. Because in responding to the call of God is when we truly understand the joy, the peace, and the blessings the Lord have in store for you. The 90th Psalm tells us it's really not about what we accumulate or accomplish for ourselves, but rather what we do for others, our service to man. Uh, in our relationship with God. We read in verse 14, satisfy us each morning with your unfailing love so we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. The joy of the Lord, that's what he wants us to have. And I covered that a couple weeks ago in one of my reflections. Uh, Psalm 90 ends with a repeated request for God's blessing upon Israel's effort. And that really does extend to us today. Uh, we read, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish it thou it. In other words, we're praying that God's grace and love works through us to produce works for us and for others. Uh, this is what God really wants for us. Uh, it's what he expects us to do. And he's letting us know we don't have the time to wait. Uh, and I've said before, Christianity is a verb, not a noun. We need to be doers of the word, not just hearers. You know, if we were convinced that we all had a terminal illness. We wouldn't waste a day, an hour, a second on things of the Lord. We would be steadily working for the benefit of others and to show our love and what, what the Lord has done for us. Well, I hate to tell you this, folks, but you all do have a terminal illness. It's called life. And we don't have much time. None of us do. So we need to be about the Lord's work. 
putting on the whole armor of God. These have been my reflections for today. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again. And this is Father Steve wishing you all a very blessed day.